Well, it's good to be with you once again. We uh, hope and pray that you and you've been enjoying the messages, and uh, hopefully they've spoken to your heart and even convicted their, your heart, and, and maybe even uh, helped you with your relationship with Christ and your fellowship with Christ. And I pray that that's uh, been the the aim of these messages to help you out in this difficult time that we're going through, these times of uncertainty. But I want us to look today at Luke 14, chapter, verse 25 through 35. And I want us to look what Will and I have been talking about discipleship and uh, how we can better do that. Uh, I want us to look today what a really a, a committed uh, disciple is all about. Uh, and the Bible tells us in this passage of Scripture that this is what you must do if you want to be a committed disciple. So in verse 25, it says, Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will, it, will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? Or if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not sit uh, first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose uh, the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It is thrown out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, this opportunity again to share your word and Lord to see what a committed disciple is all about how we can live that life Lord we preached on how we can live a Christian life you have to live it through us and certainly a committed disciple has to allow Christ to live that life through them we've just got to surrender and as we look at this passage of scripture we're going to see some pretty strict uh, qualifications and things we must do. And I pray, Father, that you'll give us the boldness uh, to carry out these things according to your will. So, Lord, speak to hearts as we present this message. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of my favorite people to be around uh, years ago, I haven't seen him in quite a while, was Sammy Gilbreth. Sammy Gilbreth uh, was our... Uh, evangelism director from Montgomery, our state evangelism director. Uh, several years ago, he found out he had aneurysm uh, on his heart. Uh, and he uh, went to the doctor, and the doctor said, you're just not eligible for a candidate for a heart replacement because you're too old. And so anyway... Rather than sitting around twiddling his thumbs, Sammy went from place to place, went throughout the United States, even went around the world sharing the good news of Jesus Christ whether, wherever he was invited. And he was certainly a committed disciple of Jesus Christ. Uh, when he got through at the end of the day, he would call his wife and he says, Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow or I'll see you in glory. I mean, he was a very committed disciple of Christ. And that's what Christ expects of us, is commitment if we're going to be a, a disciple of his. First of all, what is a disciple of Jesus Christ? Well, the word disciple actually means learner. Uh, 
Learning to be like Jesus, that's what a disciple is really all about. Salvation is free. We know that. But discipleship costs. There are some things we've got to be willing to do. We've got to be willing to follow Christ. And he gives us instructions here as to what it takes to be a disciple of Christ. Uh, it, disciple uh, must worship. What does worship mean, really, at any cost? We must put Jesus as number one. A lot of people worship money. A lot of people worship their home, their car, uh, the other material things they have. But if we're going to be a disciple of Christ, we have to worship him. We have to put him in the number one position in our life. In this passage of Scripture, in verse 26, uh, he says, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and his mother and his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yet even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Some folks have said this Jesus contradicts himself here when he uses the word hate, his father and his mother. The word hate here really means to put, put me above. That's what he said. If anyone comes to me, and does not put me above his father and his mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters. Yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Is Jesus number one in your life? Is he, is he really number one in your life? Would your neighbor say when they see you that Jesus Christ is number one in your life? Would your family say that Jesus Christ is number one in your life? by your actions when they see you from day to day or how often they may see you. I'm telling you, we must put Jesus Christ, number one. That's the first prerequisite, I guess, to be a disciple of Christ. He's got to be number one or else we'll be following someone or something of this world. He must become before our personal reputation. We've got to take ourselves off our throne and put Jesus Christ on the throne. We've got to allow him to take over our life and give him complete control. You know, that's kind of hard to do. We want to control our life, don't we? We want to control our job. We want to control our money. We, we're just controllers. But that's totally opposite of what you must do to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. You have to put him on the throne. And trust Him to take care of you. You know, He tells us He'll supply our needs, whatever they may be. And we need to trust Him and put Him in the number one place. Jesus must come before your personal ambitions. There's nothing wrong with having ambitions. I hope everyone has ambitions. But if you have ambitions without Christ and Christ's guidance, you've got a problem. You've got a problem trying to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. A.W. Tozier has written many books on prayer. Of course, he's written other books as well, but probably known best for his uh, writings on prayer. This was what he said when he talked about uh, this passage of Scripture where it says, take up your cross. He said, a man who is crucified is facing only in one direction. Wow. A man who is crucified is facing only in only one direction. A man who is crucified is not going back. I mean, you're there. You're not going back. You're not going anywhere. Then he said, a man who is crucified has no further plans of his own. You know, in Luke 9, 62, it says, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. We've got to worship him. We've got to put him in the number one position above our family, above our friends, above our job. Whatever has taken over number one in your life, you're not going to be a committed disciple. You'll give in to the other God that you're worshiping rather than God himself because you'll go and follow the things of the other God that has taken number one in your life. To be a committed disciple of Christ He's got to be number one in your life. And we've got to work at any cost. Uh, makes no difference. You know, uh, during this time of virus, you know, they've been working on Denny Stadium, 
trying to get that thing ready to go for the fall. They didn't quit. A lot of other places shut down, so to speak, but they haven't quit on that construction. Listen, I don't care what uh, problems we may have trying to witness for Christ, we can't stop. We've got to keep on witnessing for Christ. It says in verse 28, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost to see if he has enough money to complete it? For if he lays the foundations not able to finish it, everyone will, who sees it will ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. You know, the, the spiritual life is like building a tower. Uh, you've got to be willing to be sold out for Christ if you're going to build your life in a way that would be pleasing to Christ. When, we, when a tower is being built, there's a foundation, a strong foundation. When the spiritual life is being built, there's a strong foundation, and you find that only in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Once you've been born again, your life begins to build. You begin to build your tower. It's got to be uh, sacrificially constructed. There's some things in our life that we must give up. We can't go to the places and do some things we used to do. Uh, listen, we our life has been changed. If it's really been changed, you won't want to go and do those things and say those things and be a part of things that you were once a, a part of as an unbeliever in Christ. But you're building your life. You're trying to become a committed disciple, a follower, a learner, of Jesus Christ, and you've got to be complete. It's, you've got to complete this journey. You've got to complete this building because you're going to have to build it strong to last long. Uh, you know, a lot of, back when I worked at, at the lumber company, we would sell lumber overseas. They'd get our best lumber that we had over here, and, of course, they paid a pretty pre a penny for it. But they got the best lumber because it, they wanted to build buildings that were built strong to last long. And that's exactly of what's happened. Uh, in our building of our Christian life, we need to build uh, strong to last long. In other words, we need to be a committed follower of Jesus Christ. The problem today in, in Christians' lives is we have too many people that have half-built towers. They get to going in this spiritual walk. They get discouraged. Uh, and they committed when they accepted Christ to follow him. But something happens along the way. It gets a little too tough. And they give in and they kind of decommit from their commitment to Christ. And they go their own way and live their own life. I'm telling you, being a disciple of Christ is not easy. Uh, it's not easy being a disciple of Christ. That's why many people today fall by the wayside. They give in and they, uh, they give in to the world and they give up on building their Christian walk, their Christian life with Jesus Christ. They just can't handle the spiritual warfare that they have become a part of. They're kind of kind of in the secret service, so to speak, rather than being bold as we should be in our service to the Lord. Because the Bible tells us that we're in a war. We are disciples of war. And we must war at any cost. We've got to hang in there. We've got to keep going at any cost. He says in verse 31, or suppose the king is about to go to war against another king. Will he not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he's not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything, he cannot be a disciple. Let me tell you something. If you don't have conflicts in your life with this world system today, you're not in the war with Christ. 
I mean, that's just simple. Uh, Satan is really after us, and he has his people here on earth that's really after Christians. We are being persecuted like I never thought we would be. Uh, but I knew we would one day, but I never thought it would. I would be able to see it, and I certainly don't relish that. But the Bible tells us we are in a spiritual warfare, and God requires us not to be cowards in the warfare. You know, many people today are afraid of what they might lose in following Jesus Christ. They're afraid of losing uh, their finances, their reputation. They're afraid of uh, losing their jobs. And many people are because of their stand for Christ. Afraid you might lose some friends. Well, you know, I, I preached some time ago and used this verse of Scripture. It says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? We're in a war with the world, with this world system that Satan has uh, devised. And we've got to continue. We've got to continue. Uh, I was listening to a song the other day that the Mark Trammell Quartet sang. It's an older song. Uh, the title of the song is Too Much to Gain to Lose. We've, we have, the song says, we've crossed the hot burning desert, struggling the right road to choose. But somewhere up ahead, there's cool, clear water. And peace is... And, and peace is what we're going to find when we get there. We've got to remember, folks, we've got too much to gain to lose. So we need to continue to be the battle, to be the soldier in the battle that Christ has called us to be because there's no substitute for victory over the devil. We've got to continue to fight. We've got to continue to fight. There's no such thing as neutrality in this war that we're fighting. Which side are you on? Let me ask you that question. I just said it at the beginning of this that if you don't have conflicts with this world system, you're not in the war with Christ. Whose side are you on? Are you having conflicts? Are you having difficulties in your Christian walk? If you are, you're in the battle for the Lord. And there's no negotiating or appeasing the devil. He's a terrorist. That's exactly who he is. He's out to destroy your life. He's out to destroy your witness. And destruction is his name. That's, it. That's who he is. He is out to destroy everything that God is trying to get going on and has going on in this world today. God desires disciples who are not really that cautious. They're not afraid to do something or say something. We have folks today that's they're afraid to do something, afraid it might offend someone, but you can't worry about that. The Word of God is offensive to those people that do not know Christ as their personal Savior. The world's conditions make us cautious. You know, a lot of people there are cautious investing their money. They're, again, they're cautious as what they say because it's t being taken out of context. You can't even say anything privately without people jumping on the bandwagon wanting to get, uh, you to retire or you to be forced out because of something that you said. But we must go into battle with our whole heart and our whole soul. Heart, mind, and soul. That's what the Bible tells us. We've got to have the Motto, never surrender, never retreat. Because we are in a war against Satan and we've got to keep on keeping on no matter what. Jesus demands preeminence in our life. He is our commander. If he's our commander, we ought to follow him and do what he's called us and told us we must do to be a disciple of him. Let me ask you a question. Does Christ have everything that you have? There's a saying today. Are you all in? Are you? Are you all in for Christ? Are you all in for being a disciple of Jesus Christ? I'm telling you, it's not easy. If it was, we'd have people lined up out the door of our churches to be a disciple of Christ. 
but yet it's hard to get people to even come to church anymore to learn more about being a disciple of Christ. Are you all in? Are you all in? Because, listen, folks, the disciples must witness at any cost. We've got to witness at any cost. It says in verse 34, salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It is thrown out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Folks, we've got to witness as God's people. If we're going to be a, def a committed follower of Christ, that's what we must do. And we are. Again, we are a witness. He tells us again, I've said this many times in Acts 1-8, you shall be a witness. What kind of witness are you? What kind of witness are you? He tells us here that we're the salt of the earth. And salt preserves. Did you know that we are the word to those who do not know about the word? We are the word of God. The old song says, your life's the only Bible some people will ever read. And how true that is. But we are the salt of the earth. And we preserve the word of God through the life that we live as a committed uh, follower of Christ. Salt flavors. Uh, I preached, uh, I actually have a message on salt. And salt does flavor. You know, I'm not a big salt fella. Uh, I, I, we talked about that some time ago. Uh, I'm, but boy, when there's no salt on my vegetables, boy, they taste horrible. But you put a little salt on, and man, they taste so good. Salt flavors. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people out there today that need some salt in their life. Something to flavor it up. They've been looking for something to flavor their life. And we're it. We're it. We're there to tell them about the relationship that they can have with Jesus Christ. And that's what we're supposed to do. Salt heals. Salt heals. You know, our world is sick. I mean, it is sick, isn't it? And it needs salty saints to share God's love. It's, uh, it, it heals. Uh, I know the older folks uh, probably know about salt, you know. You, you soak your feet in uh, salt water when you get a cut or stick a nail on your foot or something like that. Salt does miraculous things. It, it heals. And we're the salt of the earth. But it says here, if it's lost its saltiness, it's not good for anything. It's not good for anything. We must be a committed disciple of Jesus Christ if we're going to make the difference that he wants us to make in the lives of other people. Salt burns. Boy, I'm telling you, you put salt on a cut, it burns, don't it? I'm telling you, it's something else. We're going to irritate some people, aren't we? If we share the good news of Jesus Christ, we're going to irritate some people because they do not believe what we believe. We're going to offend people. And the Word of God offends. The blood of Jesus Christ offends people. But we can't worry about that. We are the salt of the earth. We've got to tell the truth. If we don't tell the truth, they're certainly not going to hear it on TV, are they? You don't know who to believe anymore. But I want you to know you can believe the Word of God and if you're a committed disciple of Christ, people can believe what you say by the life that you live. Salt penetrates. Uh, it penetrates everything uh, it's put on. You know, I told you, uh, Susan and I was making instant potatoes. Uh, she salts before. I salt after. She started it, and I finished it. And they were so salty we couldn't eat it. It penetrates, and you can't take it off. Listen, when you are a disciple of Christ and you get into the life of an individual and you tell them about Christ, they may not make a decision right then, but I want you to know that's forever implanted in their mind. And God can use that and work on people's hearts and change their life. I'm telling you, that's what people need today. We're to be, the Bible tells us we're to be separate from sin, but not isolated from sinners. 
We've got to share. How else are they going to hear if we don't tell them about Christ? They're certainly not going to hear about it in, in their riots and things that's going on in this world today or whether they may not be rioting, but just in their everyday life. They're not going to hear the Word of God unless we share the Word of God. And we must witness at any cost, no matter what. Let me ask you this question. Are you a fully committed disciple of Jesus Christ? We've told you what it takes. We've told you the requirements that uh, it takes, the life that you must live. Are you a fully committed disciple of Christ? This is his requirement. How does he see you today? We're, he is the standard. I'm, I'm not the standard. You're not the standard that we live up to. God is the standard that we live up to. Are you all in? Are you fully committed to being a disciple of Jesus Christ? Listen, that's what he requires. And that's what you must do as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, I hope and pray that the people that's listening understand what it really takes to be a disciple a learner, learn more each and every day about you, grow more each and every day, build on this foundation of salvation. And I pray that if someone listening is really not in the battle, that they know that they've been born again. They're just kind of in the silent service. Lord, I pray that you prick their heart and help them to realize that they're really not where you want them to be. And Lord, as we go forth trying to share your word, I pray that you'll bless the word. Lord, we pray that you'll speak to the hearts of individuals. Lord, we may never see the results of what we say to them, but Lord, uh, we leave the results to you. Just use us for your glory. Help us to be that committed disciple you would have us to be to show a lost and dying world what they can really have that really makes a difference in their life. And that's a relationship with you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, once again, we thank you again for being a part of our Wednesday night service. Uh, looking forward to Sunday and Sunday night service. Uh, if you can, come and be a part of our service. We're open on Sunday mornings. And Hope and pray that you can uh, come and be a part. We socially distance. You, wear, you can wear a mask. We have uh, all the, uh, the things, the sanitizer you may need. But I hope and pray that you have an opportunity. You'll come and worship with us. And I hope you, and pray you have a blessed day today. And pray that you'll try to do your best to be a committed disciple for Jesus Christ. Thank you.